You are listening to the SDSU Podcast presented by the East Village Times with your hosts Andre Hagverdian and Paul Garrison. I want to welcome Tayton Byer to the SDSU podcast. How's your night going, man? It's going good. We appreciate you taking the time. Um, you know, you you committed to San Diego State in July. Um, uh, you, before your high school senior season at Centennial High. You know, take us through your recruitment and why you ultimately chose San Diego State back in July. So I ultimately chose it because I really just felt like it was my home there. Like, I loved it out there. The school is super nice. I like the school. And I also have a great relationship with Coach Sumler, and he ended up staying there. So that's why I chose it. What were the, some of the other schools that were hot on your trail that were maybe some of your finalists? Um, Washington State, Fresno State, and those were the only two. Now, we obviously know how the season went out with the announcement of Coach Hoke. Uh, departing, you know, what were your thoughts about that and how that might play out uh, with your commitment? So I met Coach Hoka a couple times. I mean, he he was nothing but nice to me. He showed my family, like, nothing but respect, and we liked him. But, yeah, it definitely – um, I liked Coach Tumbler. Coach Tumbler played a big role in my recruitment to San Diego State, and um, obviously hearing that he was going to stay was a big part of the reason why I chose to stay at San Diego State. Now, you tweeted out a confirmation of your uh, commitment after meeting Sean Lewis. We're all still getting to know him. Only met him once. Um, but So what can you tell Aztec Nation and all of us about your meeting with him? Uh, he seems like a great guy. I mean, I talked to him on the phone for a couple of minutes. Um, he has high energy. He was very nice, and he was a great guy, honestly. Um, you were mentioning Coach Sumler earlier about him returning, uh, you know, he is a name who comes up a lot with just people who, um, you know, appreciate him as a coach and how he recruits players and, um, you know, keeps it real with them, et cetera. I mean, what, what is it about Coach Sumler that really stood out to you? Um, it's just his personality. He's able to connect to you, like, really well. And then he also does, does a great job with, you know, also uh, having your family, like, in the loop as well. Like, he does a great job talking to my parents. He always is – talking to them and making sure I'm okay and stuff like that. Now, San Diego State's been known to play the three three five. You know, we know Coach Sumler is coming back. We know their defensive line coach is coming back. We don't know who the defensive coordinator is going to be. You know, Coach Lewis said he wasn't sure whether they're going to keep the three three five initially, you know, last week. You know, what has, what has the staff told you about how the defense is going to work? Um, they, they haven't told me much, but I'll probably find out this weekend. I'm going on my official visit up there, so I'll probably find out more up there. But yeah, I'm just looking to play. I'm out of where. Is is this this is gonna be your official visit this weekend? But is that the first time you're gonna be on campus? Or did you? No, no, sir. No, sir. I've been on a couple of officials, and I've been to the games too. So, um, tell us about your game. Who is uh, Tate and Byer? Um, he's a very physical DB. He's got speed. He's got great hands, great um, feet. He's a he's got swagger. He's everybody. Uh, could you give us some of your measurables? You know, how tall are you? How high is your vertical? Forty time, maybe hundred meters. So you ran track. Um, you know, just things that let people get to know you as an athlete. Yeah, so I'm five to ten, one seventy. Um, I ran track. I ran eleven two. Um, my forty is probably about four four, low four five. Um. Yeah. How would you be? What about your vertical? Uh, I think thirty six. All right, all right, all right. So for people who are listening who don't know, um, Hayden, he stars for the fifteenth best high school in the country. Um, at Centennial, uh, they they had three losses this year. They were to Bishop Gordon, who's number one, Modern Day, who's number three. Um, and we're gonna have to ask about St. John Bosco in a minute. But number number five, man. Um, but just, you know, being able to play in such a, you know, good program that obviously against the best talent that high school has to offer. I mean, what do you think that did for you in your development? Um, it obviously played a big factor, like um, playing against those schools just gives you much confidence because when you can do it against those schools and the number one kids in the nation, 
and they're they're a um compatible um competition, it just makes you that much better in uh space and stuff like that, garden receivers. Paul mentioned St. John Bosco. You know, it goes down in the record book as a 43-42 loss, but it was quite a controversial ending, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Centennial, you're down seven. You score on fourth and goal with eight seconds left. You go for two, don't make it, so you're down one. Yeah. Bosco gets a 15-yard penalty. You recover the onside. You got 45 yards to go. The Hail Mary attempt, you know, the quarterback was hit by two defenders. Uh, Bosco thought it was a sack. They rushed the field, but the quarterback picked it up, raced for what should have been a touchdown. The mm -hmm. rest confused, called him down. Obviously, the video is online. People can decide for themselves. But, you know, how great of a game was that to play in? And, you know, how did you feel about the ending? Um, It was a really good game to play in. It was a great experience. Um, The ending, I mean, we should have got the job done in the third quarter. Like, we should have just been but then blowing them out and took the W. But, I mean, it was a good experience to, like, be a part of. There's – um. There's a player on the Aztecs currently uh, that's from Centennial, Eric Butler. He's a DB. Um, I want to see – he would have been a senior when you were a sophomore. How familiar yeah. are you with Eric, and uh, what do you think about potentially playing with him? Uh, me and Eric are cool. Um, I used to play offense, so um, I didn't really get the chance to uh, play with Eric or get to know him well when uh, he was there. But, yeah, we definitely built a new connection, and uh, I really like him. He's cool. Have you – did you reach out to him – when you were making your decision on some advice on San Diego State? Uh, can you say that one more time? Yeah, did you reach out to him uh, to get some advice on San Diego State when you were making your decision? Um, No, not really. I, I just felt like um, it was the right place for me, so I didn't really ask him or nothing. What about that switch that you just said to offense? I mean, when did, from offense to defense, when did, when did you make that switch and what brought that upon uh, so I made that switch my junior year, started junior year. I was playing a slot, but I wasn't really uh, seeing the field a lot. So I decided to switch to DB, and then it really took off from there. Hmm. Um, now you have offers uh, from basically the entire Ivy League, if I remember that right. Mm -hmm. um, your your 4.2 GPA probably has something to do with that. Um, how many AP courses have you taken, and do you have any idea how many credits you'll have as you enter college? Um, so I only took in two AP classes. I took, um, AP Lang and AP Lit, but yeah, it's just part of like my parents just instilled that in me. Like, um, it's, it's more grades than, you know, sports. So. And so what are some of your maybe like academic interests or possible ma majors at, at SDSU? Um, I, I want to study business. How did, how did, uh, you know, wanting to study business or um academics you know what role did that play in your decision to go to San Diego State um I mean I just I just I just wanted to go there and play like some football so going to um having the business program there too it's such a great program that it, it just benefits me in both uh worlds you know confidence is a trait that all great quarterbacks possess anyone who talks about you talks about that confidence you mentioned playing slot, but I think you might have started at quarterback as a freshman. Is that right? Yes, sir. I started at quarterback as a freshman. So do you, where do you think that confidence comes from? Is it Did it come from being a quarterback at one point? Is that something you would have had regardless of whether you played quarterback? Um, it's just something I have. It's something I bring to the game that I feel like is a big part of the reason why I'm so successful. It's just what I do. You know, speaking about that confidence – you know, you're ranked as 107th player in the state of California by 24-7 sports and the eighth best corner. Are there really seven players at your position better than you in California? No, I feel like I'm definitely top one, top two. Like, if not if not one, then I feel like I'm top two. Tell us more about that confidence because, you know, you say it's just something that you do, but it's a, it's a, it's an incredible quality. Um, and I've asked around about you to a couple people, and that's what they mentioned as well, is your confidence. Um, as you are stepping up in competition from high school, going into college, I mean, what, what are just some keys for you to being able to keep that confidence up? Or is it one of those things that it's just never shaken? It's just never shaken. I always step on the field with the chip on my shoulder. I always give it my all. So being confident gives me that ability to, you know, really lock in on plays. 
And, and then, you know, when you're trying to figure out your game and you're trying to, you know, kind of emulate study film, things like that, what are, what are some corners that you kind of emulate or, you know, uh, pay attention to watch film on? Uh, I'm a big Green Bay Packers fan. So Jair Alexander is my guy. I like Jair's film a lot. Packers. How did you get to the Packers? Uh, my parents are out from Wisconsin, so they kind of raised me as a Packers fan. Uh, got it, got it, got it. All right, did that did that come up with you and Sean Lewis? Because, you know, he obviously went to school out in, out in Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, yeah, he definitely mentioned it. <laughs> um, you also returned kicks in, uh, in high school, special teams. Um, is that something you plan on doing in, at the next level as well? Uh, yeah, for sure. If they need me, I'm I'm here for it, like. I feel like I'm a great return man too. So if they need me, I'm definitely here for it. Do you? Um, I read somewhere that you planned on being in college in January. Is that accurate? Are you happy, hoping to enroll early? Yeah. So I'm set. I'm set to enroll early. And then so now you know we're in the early December. Enrolling early and getting into the you know conditioning program is like mid January. What's what are you planning on doing and improving on over the next? 45 days so you can hit the ground running there yeah so right now we just got a season so i've been um i've been getting back with my trainer we're working on speed footwork and then we've been lifting every day too so i'm really uh trying to focus in and get ready for the season so right now i mean you know, the hottest topic in college football is you know conference realignment right mm-hmm. um no place is impacted more than that with than california you know you have stanford cal ucla usc joining conferences where they're playing in the East coast, right? Um, you know, California high schoolers in the past could leave California, go to Arizona, Oregon, et cetera, come back to play in California many times. Now, if a player competes outside the state, they might play in California very rarely, or if at all, do do you think that's impacting California high schoolers maybe could be attracted more to San Diego state in the future because it gives them a better opportunity to play at home? Um, I just feel like, if a player wants to play somewhere, I feel like they would like, they want to play there. Like, I just feel like if it's it's their decision on where they want to play and stuff like that. Like if you want to stay home, you want to stay home. If you want to go away, you can go away. Did the, did the San Diego States, you know, when the PAC 12 kind of broke up on that one day and and San Diego state was hoping to get invited into a power five, did, did that not happening? Give you any pause with your commitment to San Diego state? Um, Coach Summer mentioned it. He sent me a couple articles on it, but no, I, I really like San Diego State from uh, the day I stepped on campus. Oh, it's been a great interview, man. Really appreciate your time. We got some rapid fire, non football related, just an opportunity for Aztec Nation to get to know you a little bit. Um, what's your favorite food? Uh, pizza. All right. Now, where's, where's, where's the pizza joint in Corona? Uh, it's, it's a little place called Dahlia's. I don't know if you guys have it out there, but that's my favorite place. What do you get at Dahlia's? Just like pepperoni pizza, cheese sticks, everything. The whole Pasta. thing. Huh? Nice. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite movie or TV show? Uh, TV show Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard that one before. No, I was saying that. Oh, really? No, I let, I, we hear it all, not all, not from the podcast. That's too funny. Uh, <laughs> what, who's your favorite musical artist? Uh, I like Young Boy, NBA Young Boy. Any any uh, particular song or something? Or well, actually, let me ask you this way: uh, When you are getting you know psyched up for a game, like are you a music guy going starting? What what are you listening to? Uh, it just depends on the day. Like some days I won't have my headphones in, and if like I'm on the bus ride, I'll obviously have my headphones in. But like, yeah, I just I just listen to rap like before a game. Okay, all right. Um, and when you are not uh, playing football, practicing, getting better for that, what what are some hobbies, things that you enjoy doing? Uh, I like spending time with my friends, playing video games, going to play basketball at the park, just stuff like that. Always stay active, kind of. Yeah. What uh, what video game are you into? Uh, right now I'm playing 2K. I'm okay. in the 2K. All right. Yeah. right. Do, you, do you like like seasons or you like have your own person? Uh, I have my own person. Now, is it you or do you uh, like, do you name it after yourself? Uh, you can, but no, nah, mine's not named after myself. <laughs> <laughs> what What team do you play with? Uh, I'm on the Bucks because my um that's my favorite team. Okay. Yeah, you got a nice Wisconsin uh yeah. squad of teams. Mm-hmm.
Tayton, uh, we appreciate you taking the time. I know you've got a busy time and holidays are coming up, but we appreciate you taking the time. And uh, we look forward to seeing you out in uh, spring camp on the practice field at San Diego State. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Right, good. Yeah. Hope you have a uh, very, very good spring or very good uh, official visit this upcoming weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Tayton Byer, a cornerback from Centennial. He's a guy that uh, only has played corner. This was his second season, as he told us. Uh, really shooting up the the charts in terms of the uh, defensive backs on the West Coast. Uh, I know Greg Biggins is very high on him from 24-7 sports. Uh, what did you think about our talk with him? Well, I think a lot of the... Um... A lot of the, the the pieces, I think, for me, kind of fell into place. Um, you know, you watch his huddle film, and uh, you're like, well, what is there not to love about this guy, right? Um, obviously, he's not the tallest guy, and that's always going to cost, um, but it's always going to cost somebody. But when you're, um, you know, his age, you have those measurables in terms of, like, how fast he is. He's definitely quick as a punt returner. Um, he, he, uh, you know, he, he seems like he has a decent vertical, but more importantly, he can, he, he gets up quickly, um, and has good instincts, uh, you know, you, 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 a lot of times when you watch high school film, the guys are just so much better than the people that they're playing across for them that it's, it kind of hides whether or not they're actually super good. Um, but he's playing against top competition, making plays. And um, the question was to me, it was always like, okay, well, so why is he the 107th ranked guy and not higher? Um, and I think the answer was he didn't start playing cornerback until his junior season, when usually by the junior season, your ranking's done. Like there's not a ton of movement after that. And as far as like being recruited and stuff like that, that's the same for that too. That's when those colleges are going to be making those decisions and, and forming their boards. And so I think that kind of put that together for me is just like you know were my eyes deceiving me was there something I was missing um obviously being the 107th player in the state of California is fantastic but it goes to show you know just like how quickly he's been able to to, to rise up um and so I you know I think it's 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 a very very exciting player um that you know no matter what defensive system they're gonna play there's gonna be corners on the islands that's just how football is nowadays yeah, you're right. Like, I remember looking at the California rankings in the summer, trying to figure out, like, who from San Diego was ranked where. Mm -hmm. And they're, it's almost unchanged, even yeah. after these guys played an entire season mm -hmm. in the fall. So I get what you're saying in that sense that, like, the rankings are pretty much done, like, before their senior year. The, I, I always look at guys like when they're coming in, okay, what's the probability that these guys could play right away? Mm. And right. The two, some of the, I guess the three ways you can look at it is, is it a position of need? Are they coming in early in January? And do are they like physically good enough to play right away? I think Tayton fits all three of those, mm. right? Who, who, what's left that corner at the moment, you know, Des Malone, is in the transfer portal. He's not coming back. Dallas Branch left midseason. We're not sure. As, as we sit here on Tuesday night, anyway, we don't know what's happening with Noah Tumblin. He's got that COVID year, but he hasn't, you know, publicly declared, you know, whether he's, com he's coming back, he's transferring, he's trying to go pro. Uh, Chris Johnson, obviously, is is next in line. Uh, but there's not a ton after that. that. Sam Dunnell, who was a really promising freshman this year. He left the team before the season even started. So there's not a lot of depth there. And so you could see Tayton coming in in January and pressing and uh, potentially getting playing time when uh, fall comes around. You know, it's, it's interesting. And I, I, I think this is, again, it's, it depends how the, the new staff um, is going to run things. Um, 160 pound corner uh, who I should say uh you know, Bayer is a willing tackler um, and being a smaller guy, you know, he's he smart he about 70. Uh, did I hear that wrong? I thought so. I thought you said 170. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe he's, he's a little bit bigger. Um, so maybe they can be there, but if, if they're going to count on their corners to like really help out in the run game, like the three, yeah. three, five did, that's just going to be a question for him. That's yeah. all. And it's a question for any freshman, um, you know, 
Uh, Noah Avenger, who also transferred out, um, he obviously played and started some games as a true freshman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. even though he had size, it was it's still a difficult thing to be able to to be a be a tackler at the Division One level. Um, but as you, as you pointed out, um, coming in early is is a huge thing to do. Um, I think the other piece about as far as him playing early um, is, you know, if, if this was Kurt Maddox's defense and he was coming into a room that already knew everything that was going on, it, that would make it even harder. Um, but uh, it's interesting that, you know, he's going to be stepping into a spring football for the first time, just like Chris Johnson is, just like anybody else is going to be. And so I think that also plays to his advantage. And you were mentioning Noah Tumlin. Um, and, uh, got, you know, obviously Noah is somebody who's been on, on the podcast and we've talked to, and he's, he's great. Um, I, I liked his little tease. You see those, those, uh, his, his, he did put a tweet out with him in an Aztec uniform, four pictures, um, blessed with the thankful hands, you know? Um, and so I know everyone's kind of, uh, salivating and hoping that, that, that he can, um, that he'll make that choice to come back to San Diego state. And, and so that's just an interesting, you know, what, what's going to be happening there. Um, but, you know, I think that if Noah Tumlin does in fact decide to come back, um, I, I think it's, it's difficult to talk about like how impactful that is because of everything that you just said, they've offered a few, um, if you believe social media, they've offered a few uh, cornerbacks, uh, whether it's uh, J, uh, junior college guys, um, things like that. Uh, transfers and so you know who knows you know where where all of that's going to lead um, but I think it's huge for them to be able to figure out a way to keep Bayer in the fold um, and you know we talked about from the from the jump I mean from the jump the first name we say hey what's the coach that needs to make sure he comes back and we said well on the defensive side of the ball it's Demetrius somewhere like that's yeah. the guy who needs to come back he's the guy with San Diego connections he's the guy that we hear his name coming up all the time about people who, and we hear it again, like that's the reason that he's there. Um, what is it that you like about his, about Bayer's game and, and what you've seen from him? Well, I think we have the confidence aspect of it really stands out mm -hmm. because, you know, following him on Twitter, you know, every, before every game, he would tweet out something about like, no one's, you know, something, com a confidence statement about, uh, you know, no one's going to, no one's going to throw on me tonight or my corner is going to be shut down and things like that. That stuff stands out, right? You wouldn't say that stuff if you were getting burned week after right. week. Right. Right. But, and even though he's 5'10", he's got length, he's fast. Mm -hmm. He said he has good feet. That stands out on his tape. Um, I, I, I think he, he's got the makings of a D1 cornerback and excelling Absolutely. at it. I mean, Noah Tumblin didn't play corner until he got to college. Right. And look what he's doing in his third in his third year playing corner, uh, really a second full year. Um, and so I see a lot of similarities with, with those two guys in, in that sense where, you know, they're quarterback. Like so Noah was a quarterback. Right. Tayton was started as a quarterback, although he didn't play all four years. I was going to say I was going to say I might be very generous to put Bayer in the same category with Noah, who you know, starred for four years and was breaking records at Mira Mesa High School. But yeah, better, better quarterback it. than J.R. Tolver. In high school. <laughs> right, as absolutely. We, We've heard it. We've heard it. We debated on the podcast last week. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, no, he's. I, I like what I see from him, and I did from the minute he uh, uh, got an offer. I believe he was one of those guys that got an offer and committed like in a week. Mm -hmm. If and, I remember correctly, I, I, I'd have to look back on it. But I mean, that's the, you know he said it, I stepped on campus and I fell in love with the place. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't know what it is about San Diego state that, that got him that, you know, that, that really connected him that, but I think it's a pretty special thing. Um, let me, let me read a couple of things that, you know, in preparation for this, um, I reached out to Andrew Amavai, who is Leo Amavai's dad. Um, but he's also the quarterback coach at Bosco. And so he was there for Bayer's mm -hmm. last game. Um, and here's what he said about him. He says, he's a tough kid who has good football instinct and plays very aggressive. Here we go. Doesn't lack confidence. He is a really good corner. He is exactly what is needed to defend in the Mountain West. And so that's that's an opposing coach's, you know, perspective on 
on what he was able to do. And so I thought, um, you know, it, again, it's we you can watch a huddle tape, but these guys are watching way more than that. And they're paying attention to it. And it wasn't like, oh, let me go look that guy up. They, they knew who he was. Um, Dennis Ryan, who uh, kind of breaking out as, as our uh, East Village Times um, uh, kind of football scouting analyst, played played football. Um, and, and he, you know, he had a few things that he said. He says, um, you know, he played against a very good competition. And, and so that really stuck out to him. He has good speed that's been measured, right? Because everyone talks about, hey, but he's played at a place that, you know, you can actually trust the times that are there. Um, he, he does more man coverage than zone, but he has good ball skills. He's a decent tackler and, and a good punt returner. Um, he uh, recovers well when he does get beat, um, but he, he's going to fit in and he seems to be pretty a pretty bright kid, which, um, you know, I think is an important thing, especially as they're trying to um, move into, you know, Division One football and all the different things that are going to be thrown at them, um, especially in the in the fast tempo that supposedly everything that the Aztecs are going to be doing is going to be done in that Aztec fast manner. So he checks all the boxes, and um, you know I think that Aztec fans should be very excited uh, to be able to bring him into the fold. And um, you know I think it, it it's another I think really interesting part of this as you know there are a lot of DBs who are still making plays in the NFL from San Diego state. And I think that being able to, to really be attractive to cornerbacks and attractive to, you know, the, 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 the tutoring that they're going to get from Demetrius Sumler, um, you know, I think is, is a really important aspect of this as well. Yeah. The, the there's a second guy, um, who committed as a corner, uh, which is Prince Williams. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see if he also, you know, as Coach Lewis talked about in his opening day media availability, I want to speak to all these guys. I want to make sure their vision and my vision aligns so mm -hmm. that we don't have someone that comes in and within six months, you know, wants to transfer out already because it's not what they initially wanted. And so, you know, we'll see how that discussion with Prince Williams has gone if it's already happened or will go. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's also Isaiah Buxton, who we've talked about on an episode. He plays corner. Um, so I don't know if there's room for three corners in this class. Maybe there is. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how that plays out or what maybe one of the some of these guys end up moving to safety or or whatever. Or um or they take all three of them if Isaiah obviously uh, commits to San Diego State, which is not obviously uh, a done deal by any means. Uh, but he will also be on an official visit this weekend. Uh, it looks like a big, big official visit weekend in, at San Diego State um, this weekend. So we'll keep an eye on all of that and see how the cornerback uh, class shakes out on December 20th. Yeah, and uh, to your point, I mean, if, if you were wanting to come into San Diego State, um in that position, I think this is as good of a time as any. Um, and so we'll see. I, I, I think it's very smart of um, the coaching staff to, you know, have guys that are locked in and committed showing up on the same weekend as they're trying to get other guys. Um, and just, you know, being able to, to try to say, you know, let's, let's be that first San Diego state class that can do all of these things together. So, um, yeah, it's 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 exciting because the, these are the kind of players that you know San Diego State not only needs to get, but I think you know they're they're the kind of players that they need to develop and need to you know really turn into all conference players um, if they're going to be able to um, you know compete at the level that they would like to compete at. Um, and so I think that this is a um, a localish guy, right, who's uh, going to be able to to still be close enough to where everybody can get down to his games and things like that. But uh, I think that it was, you know, it was good to talk to him, man. I'm glad you were able to, to set this one up. We want to welcome Will Cianfrini to the SDSU podcast. How's your night going, Will? It's been good. It's been good. We appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I know you've got a, a busy uh, weekend coming up. Um, obviously you committed to San Diego state in October. 
Uh, can you take us through your recruitment? What were your, you know, final schools you were contemplating and why San Diego State was the place you chose? Yeah, so um, during the process, it it kind of came a little quick because uh, I got into recruiting kind of um, end of basketball season. Uh, didn't really think about football or uh, playing football in college and um, ended up uh, getting a lot of attention through – through Twitter and, and social media. And um, it was just an awesome journey. And it's just such a blessing through that. And um, Coach Krause uh, called me and and gave me a, a shot and he offered me. And uh, they just did such a good job talking to me. And and they gave me a ton of attention. And, and the way they recruited me was just it was so good for me. So I, I just felt like home. And uh, it was it was just such a good time. Um, getting to meet all the coaches and getting to meet everybody. So now, you know, Brady Hoke obviously announced the retirement, you know, and towards the end of uh, the season, uh, some of the staff hasn't been retained. So how did you find out about that news and how did that impact uh, your discussions or your thoughts about your commitment? Yeah. So um, coach Krause actually uh, called me about it and, and told me the news and, um, I mean, there's a lot of alumni that I've met and, and got to talk to. And so uh, I got to talk to them and um, was able to talk with Coach Lewis for a little bit, introduce myself. Um, but right now it's just kind of getting to know everybody because it's it's new for everybody in this process. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get down and meet everybody and, and um, excited to play. Absolutely. I think we're all in the same boat. I mean, Andre and I have met – um, Coach Lewis once, you know, at his introductory press conference. Um, and so I think all of our listeners, everyone's still trying to just get a feel for um, for him, for his staff. So, I mean, what can you tell us about Sean Lewis, the time, the opportunity to meet him, the staff that you talked with, et cetera? Well, I only got to talk to him once, and it was a, it was a short conversation. And I, I know he's got a lot going on with yeah. just being a new coach, all the media and everything, but um, great dude, um, great person. Um, watched his uh, interview with you guys or like that y'all were at. And um, I just, I like his, his personality. Uh, his motto is um, life's too short to huddle. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really a blessing getting to, to be in the opportunity that I am to, to kind of see where this program is going. So um, like I said, after this weekend, I'll, I'll be able to talk to some coaches um, face to face and get to know everybody as well. So. Absolutely. And is I mean, you know, there's been a slew of hires. Um, I mean, who on his staff maybe has been in contact with you? I know they've been really busy with, you know, trying to keep everybody up. I and mean, what, what has that been like, um, you know, just in terms of having kind of your immediate contact with the staff? Well, I, I haven't talked to much of the new staff yet. Um, I've, I've been in touch with some of their directors and um, Lauren, who's who's really helpful and, and keeps me updated on everything. And um, I think, I think that's why the official visit is this weekend for all the players that kind of get to know the staff and everything. But other than that, I haven't, I haven't met much of the staff or the new coaches. Okay. All right. Um, and, and, uh, take us through, you know, just your thoughts and what you've uh, been able to glean, uh, from the Aztec fast offense. Uh, well, uh, it's obviously exciting, uh, being a wide receiver, you know, you always want the ball to be in the air. Um, but it's, it's exciting. Uh, we're, we're all, it's like, we're starting from a new era. Mm -hmm. Um, so we just got to see where this thing is going to go. So I, I, I know a lot of fans are excited to see, um, and I know coach Lewis has got a lot of faith in, uh, the players and, and his, um, process of doing things. So. You mentioned you got your official visit at San Diego state this weekend. You know, a lot of times people come on an official visit and they come by themselves or they're the only player. I, by my last count, I think there's going to be eight players on the official visit. Um, I think six of them have already committed and two are undecided. Uh, what are your thoughts about coming on an official visit with so much, such a big group of uh, players? Well, it's exciting because I think we all share like a, a common personality of, of football and, and coming to play here. Um I I met a couple of them and got to talk to a couple of them, um, but I'm I'm excited. I think it's a it's a good thing that it's a big group of us because we all talk to each other, like yeah. talk about our thoughts about things, and 
Um, we're going to be talking to some of the older kids who are, who are hosting us as well. So I think it's going to be a good experience for all the recruits, just getting a feel for it, asking as many questions as we can, getting another new staff. And um, I'm, I'm excited. So going to meet new guys and I know they're all good people. So, you know, connection, you're a wide receiver. Obviously, that, it's important to have a connection with a quarterback. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Danny O'Neill is a quarterback who's coming on this visit. He's from Indiana. He's undecided. Mm -hmm. um, what's your thoughts on how to develop a relationship with him and maybe sway him to join uh, San Diego State? Um, I think things will kind of click. If if he feels right to come to San Diego, then uh, it's up to him. It, it's his future, but Obviously, I'm going to try and persuade them, try to persuade the best players to come. Um, but building a relationship with the quarterback, it, it's it's something that kind of comes natural. And um, it's it's a bond that it's it's really important to have, especially having the chemistry that you all have. So um, hopefully I could get him to come to SDSU with me and and all the other guys. But we'll have to see where he goes with that. But I'm excited to meet him. Um, I know he was at Colorado and uh, decommitted from Colorado. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to meet him and see where everything kind of goes. I like it. I can already see you guys being friends because you're clearly – that was a really good, mature answer. You were on his side, so I like that, that's exactly <laughs> where you should be. That was really, really good. Um, but tell us more about you, about your game. Um, you just mentioned that, you know, you weren't – you were thinking more of the basketball path. You weren't really thinking football – um, you know, we, we, how would you describe your game and let's start there? Um, I would say I'm, I'm pretty raw on um, yeah. on certain aspects. Uh, kind of got into it and basketball and wide receiver are kind of like two things and you could put them together. And so um, over the summer, got some training with uh, Deshae and uh, Mike uh, West, some of my um, trainers back home and uh, they really developed me as a receiver, taught me the fundamentals and just adding on to that. But um, I would say I'm kind of a do-it-all kind of guy. Um, I could go high point the ball. I could get low, get the ball. Um, took Take a lot of pride in my blocking now. Uh, with Coach Swain, also an SDSU alumni, yeah. um, coaching me up on that and getting me fired up on blocking. And so uh, I would just say I'm an all-around kind of receiver. And um just excited to to just grow, uh, meet these new wide receiver coaches, and just see what's going to happen at SDSU. I mean, so I mean, tell me a little bit more about that. I mean, when did you, I guess, start playing wide receiver, and mm -hmm. I guess when did this become like the, the, the real focus? Because uh, your tape's electric, bro, and so I think Aztec fans who have <laughs> uh, Aztec fans who have seen it are going to say that's raw. <laughs> like, honestly, we we have an article that's going to be coming out. We have a, uh, a scout uh, coach and former football um, college player, and he used the word polished, which is the opposite mm -hmm. of raw. So um, that's it's pretty <laughs> incredible to, to get that contrast in, in this conversation. So, I mean, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, I mean, where were you in playing football? And, and when did it finally click for you that, that this could be um, your opportunity to scholarship, et cetera? So growing up, my dad never let me play football. Um, he, I was always a soccer and basketball guy. He tried to get me in all types of sports, played a little t-ball growing up. And um, <laughs> I don't think, I think seventh grade, because uh, in Texas, you're, they have like middle school teams. So seventh and eighth grade, junior high. Right. Uh, seventh grade, my, my dad let me play and um, played wide receiver and had fun. And I never really thought of going far in football or anything, just kind of played for fun. And um, high school came along and freshman year, played on the freshman team. I played quarterback and um, it was just basketball. I got football was just like, I just go to football because my friends are in it and I'm just trying to have fun. And uh, Sophomore year, had a pretty good year. Um, and then it, I don't, junior year. So it didn't really click for me until um, the end of junior year, I would say. Uh, during basketball season. So during basketball season, uh, seven on seven comes up. And uh, I had a family friend reach out to me and ask if I wanted to try out for a seven on seven team. And um, that's when AAU starts. So I was in this decision if I was going to do both and it kind of overlapped with each other. So uh, I ended up going to the tryout, had a fun time and 
I loved it. I could just love seven on seven. So ended up playing seven on seven, um, started training for wide receiver. So this is junior year, Mm -hmm. um, right. Kind of during basketball season, mid basketball season. Um, and then played seven on seven all summer. Loved it. Uh, got to develop over the summer with some guys and, um, ended up getting my name out there a little bit, met a ton of people and the football, the football community is just so amazing. Just the people that I've met through there, um, all of the connections I made, everyone's been so great. Um, and so after that, um, that's kind of where it just took off, I guess. Wow. I know it's crazy. It's no, crazy. it's completely, it's completely crazy. Uh-huh. And now I'm in California. That's, I think it's the next question, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Good lead. Yeah, so you, you grew up in Galveston, Texas. You played your first three years of high school there. Um, First, how is you know, is that where you were born and raised? And how was playing Texas, you know, high school football? So I was born in the Woodlands, Texas. So uh that's a little north of Houston. Um, and then going into my eighth grade year, my parents moved down to Galveston. And I, I honestly couldn't tell you why. I think they just kind of wanted to change and um ended up moving to Galveston. Um and then yeah, I just started from there, and then uh, are you are y'all asking about how I got to California? Was that the question? Okay, that was gonna be the next. Question. Okay, yeah. that was gonna be the next. Sorry, yeah. sorry. No, I was, I was just making sure I like, got the question right. Step ahead of us each time, man. Like a good yes, point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how how was it playing high school football in Texas? Because we always hear about Friday Night Lights. You know, uh, was is it everything that it's cracked up to be? Uh, I would say there's definitely certain areas. I mean, Texas is always known for or for football. Um, I would say the only thing for me is is coming to Carlsbad and in the crowd and the environment and the like electricity of everything. Um, it's hard to compare that to where uh, Galveston and obviously Galveston uh, was really passionate about football in Texas, uh, but Carlsbad just the student section and the way that school took pride in their football team was. It's kind of hard to compare, but I would say in certain areas of Texas, it's really, really big. So, and then so what? You moved to Carlsbad. What brought upon that move? Okay, so uh, my dad he has a, a software company, and or he, he works for a software company, and he was opening a an office on the West Coast, and so um, we kind of that kind of comes into play in a little bit, um, but. After I uh, started playing seven on seven and kind of getting my name out there, uh, one of my buddies, uh, Mabry Matorier, he's uh, the quarterback for Wisconsin. Uh, he's going to be there, I think, this upcoming year. And uh, he asked if I wanted to come to the Elite 11, um, kind of the first round of it. And so went to the first round. Um, it was kind of like just sign up for it. And uh, you have to bring your receiver. So I, I went with him and, and met Coach Hatchett. Uh, one of the wide receiver coaches in Austin. And so uh met him and after the camp, go home and um, Coach Hatchett reaches out to me and he's like, uh, asked me if I wanted to go to the Elite 11 finals. He said he wanted to be, he wanted me to be like an underdog kind of kid, just go out there, have fun, do your thing. And um, I was nervous about it because I was, yeah. I was told they're going to have the, the top receivers there, top quarterbacks and, um, I was kind of scared and um, prayed about it. And it was one of those gut feelings where it just kind of go. So um, ended up going, had a great time, uh, met a bunch of people, met Julian. Um, and so um, we had this opportunity where, where I mentioned where my dad was opening up that West Coast office. And it's like, do I go and stay in California or do I stay here in Texas? And uh, it was kind of those decisions where I wasn't really leaning towards one or the other. Um, and I kind of just said yes to it. So ended up in California, which is kind of crazy because I had to tell all my friends and everything about it. And they're like, it's just mind blowing. But it's just been so great. The coaching staff here and uh, Coach Matt, Coach Swain, and they've just been so welcoming and all the all the kids here in San Diego, just everybody that I've met has just been so, so good. So crazy yeah and obviously staying in san diego for 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 your college but 
take us back a little bit to, to that Elite 11 finals um, in L.A., uh, because I think, you know, uh, as far as your recruitment and those kinds of things, like that was a big deal for you, even though you were coming in, as you described, as an underdog. Um, why do you think you were able to make such an impact um, at an event, you know, that's uh, you're kind of an afterthought, you know what I mean? Like it's for mm -hmm. So, I mean, how were you able to, to, you know, make such a big impact? Well, it was funny because um, I got there and obviously I was kind of nervous because I see all these big, these big receivers. And um, I kind of, I said a prayer right before I got on the field and uh, it was weird because what they did was they, they kind of had all the receivers warm up while the quarterbacks were warming up. And um, after we warmed up, they got us in this big group and they said, Hey, we need a couple guys over here. And so me just kind of had that gut feeling like I'll go over here. So I went with like, just like, I think it was 15, 20 receivers. And we went over here to where all the quarterbacks were and they brought everybody else to like another field. And so all those receivers were just kind of doing, and those DBs were just doing some drills over there while we were throwing with the quarterbacks. So it was kind of like one of those moments where I kind of was just in the right place at the right time. You know what I mean? Wow. And, um, end up, they do like the walkthrough to, to show everybody like all the quarterbacks, how to go through the progressions and um, made one catch at the very beginning. Um, and it just kind of sparked everything. You know what I mean? And um, it was just so, so real. Just, it, it was almost like I couldn't take it all in because I'd hear these quarterbacks come out like Ohio state commit, uh, Nebraska commit, Alabama commit. And it was just so, so real. Cause all I was thinking about is, all these guys are going to be playing in college, big college teams, and I'm going to be catching for them for a little bit. So I thought it would be, be pretty cool to come back home and tell my friends and family about it. And it just kind of blew up through that. So it was just an awesome, awesome experience. Yeah, and then little little did you know that um, all, most of the quarterbacks at the Elite 11 wouldn't be the big-time quarterback. The big-time quarterback would be at Carlsbad with you. <laughs> yeah, um, I know. <laughs> right? Um, so yes, what sir. was it like, you know, playing with Julian Fan this year? Um, you know, we, we've we've covered a few at, um, of uh, some of the passing camps locally, and, he, you know, he's been great with with, with um, our reporters there. But um, what is it like catching passes from him, and, and what are you expecting um, with kind of that inside look for what he's going to be doing at Alabama? I mean, uh, I remember the first time I went to throw with him, I was kind of nervous because – you hear Alabama, um, but the he was just so nice to me uh, the first time we threw. And his, just, his football IQ is just off the charts. Um, the way he, he breaks down, he breaks things down. And um, I didn't know most of the plays this year because I kind of just came in. And so wow. he, he had to coach me up on everything. And uh, he'd take time to, um, to just help me with things. And uh, he, he was just always on top of things. And the way he plays as a quarterback is – he's really confident in himself and he, and that's something you need for the next level is that, that kind of mindset. And um, he's, he's, he's just like a normal kid. Like if you were to meet him, you just think he's a, like a nice genuine person, but can throw the ball just perfect every time. Hmm. And he's just, he's just a great person. And um, it's just, it was really a fun time getting to play with him and all the guys. So. You mentioned coach Swain earlier. Uh... He is a San Diego State alum. Um, you mentioned he helped with some of the blocking. What Overall, how much impact did he have on your development and your improvement over the season? I, I would say a huge impact um, because he he kind of he, – he took things that I wasn't the best at and uh, he would kind of fix me up on them um, in certain ways. So he kind of – he would make things super simple and um, – He'd, he'd just break it down and the wide receiver training we got uh, all of us wide receivers was really really good and the fact that he broke things down and it'd be like blocking one day route running one day and catching and it just all those things combined and the the attitude he has towards us and the energy he always gives towards us is always it's it always gets you motivated to do better and better and um I built a really good relationship with uh coach Swain and um, he's definitely helped me out a ton throughout my wide receiver career. So what, you know, what did he tell you about San Diego state and what you should expect, you know, getting on campus and being an Aztec? Um, he, 
I'm, I'm kind of training with him right now. And uh, he always just tells me to, to work hard. Um, he's, he's kind of saying that things aren't always going to go your way as a receiver. And um, you kind of just got to put your head down and grind and um, just, just keep on doing your best every day. And um, I think that's something I've kind of implied in being a receiver because obviously things aren't going to go your way being a receiver. So it's just keep on coming back and, and keep on doing your best every single day and the results will show. You guys got a chance to play in the open division semis um, against Granite Hills. You caught a You're big. You're going to bring that game up? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to bring up his 43 yard touchdown. Okay, 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 okay. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but you guys fell in double overtime. You know, obviously the disappointment of losing that game, but how did it feel playing in like one of the best, you know, San Diego playoff games that people have, people who have been around San Diego still are talking about that game? Mm-hmm. Well, um, it was, it was honestly, um, it was during the game. It was so surreal because you're just kind of trying to get back on the field and trying to get down the field and score. And, um, you don't, you don't really think about it till it's the last couple of seconds, you know what I mean? And, um, we were all, all the offense, we were all on the same page during that game, uh, trying to communicate through everything and the different reads and, uh, there us receivers would would kind of mention things that we saw and Julian would tell us things he saw and um yeah it was just one of those games I was just going back and forth um they kind of pulled away towards the end and um it was almost like a heart dropping moment because all these guys that I I met and got to know through this whole process you know what I mean and um it was hard not to shed some tears in the locker room Mm -hmm. with all the guys because those are just some some of the best guys I've met and the relationships I've built or built with them just been so good and and the coaches and um but it was I mean just such a crazy game it was it was hard to watch that one again to see and how back and forth it was but I mean looking back at the season it was just such a blessing uh to be with these guys um because these are friendships that are gonna last forever so did you watch that game again yeah I, I watched it on the prep pick skin it was it was kind of tough it was kind of tough it was it was all right during during the middle of it. But once it got towards the end, it was kind of hard to watch it. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it's just, it's almost like, uh, it's like a dagger. You know what I mean? It's something that just kind of slipped away with us. Um, We had a really, really good season. Uh, Lots of great athletes on that team. And um, it was tough for us to walk away from that game. Um. When you, what are your plans for SDC? Are you planning on enrolling early or are you uh, going to be in the summer? Well, I'm uh, talking to my counselor right now. Um, I should have brought it up a lot earlier because it was kind <laughs> of the, the the transfer part of coming to California. Uh, I didn't really think of that because we're still trying to find out where I was going to go and play football. Um, but I'm, I reached out to her the other day and uh, see if I could take some online classes. But if that doesn't work out, then um I'm going to try and talk to the receiver coach, see what I could do on my own and um, work on basketball, just have fun with the rest of this year and just put my head down and grind for the upcoming season. Absolutely. Um, when – here, get your opinion on this. Um, the phrase hometown hero usually refers to a kid who played high school in San Diego who then chooses, you know, USD, chooses SDSU. Mm-hmm. Um, does that fit you? I would say it fits me. Oh, um, all right. there it is. For all of, all of my teammates kind of joke about it. They're like, "He's the hometown <laughs> hero. He's he's day." And um, uh, looking at it from an outside point of view, it's it's kind of like I'm I'm new to it because I it's my first year here. But just everyone, it feels like home. Uh, just through all the relationships and people I've met. So, uh, it definitely. It, it's like a weight lifted off my shoulders when I could say SDSU is my home. Um, but I'm I'm excited. I'm pumped. And uh, definitely all the guys are. And they've been and so encouraging uh, towards this commitment. So, Great. Got to ask about basketball, man. Um, you know, you're obviously a point guard um, doing things there in the middle of your season. I mean, tell us about um, how you would describe your game and, you know, what what, what is about basketball that you love? Uh, well, 
I actually didn't play basketball until I think third, fourth grade. And um, my dad didn't want me to play basketball because he Just played for soccer. For the record, third and fourth grade super early. You made it sound like <laughs> yeah, it was going to be Yeah, yeah true, 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 true. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was just because growing up, like when I was really little, my dad never wanted me to play basketball. He wanted me to play soccer because uh, that's his sport. And yeah. um, he went on a business trip and my mom, my mom played basketball in college. So uh, she put a movie on called Pistol Pete. And so ever since I was little, that's been my favorite player and um, started dribbling a ball. And um, I think playing basketball has just kind of been rooted me, in rooted in me from that age and uh it's always been like a place I could go to kind of just shoot get your thoughts out and um yeah it's just through that I've kind of built most of my relationships through the basketball kind of community and um once you get older you see all the basketball players start playing football as well so um football and basketball are kind of mixed in between each other but uh yeah I'd say um yeah just, that's where everything kind of originated from that's awesome. Um, my uh, my dad, who is a not a native San Diego, you know, we also came from Texas. I was born here, but my dad came from the Dallas Fort Worth area. But when he was really young, and he used to tell the stories of um, watching Pistol Pete in San Diego because he used to play here for the San Diego Rockets, and uh -huh. he said the show that he would put on like before the game was better than the actual game. Uh huh. So anyway, there you go. There's an, there's an original Pistol Feet story. Best, best player, best player of all time in my books. <laughs> we, um, you're six four. You're a tall receiver. Um, are there other wide receivers that you watch, you emulate, whether it's a professional or a college, or even someone on your team, or that like has helped you kind of you've taken parts from your game? Uh, so I I watch a couple of receivers. Um, this year I kind of watch Marvin Harrison, uh, because we're the same build uh six four uh taller a little lanky um I watch tall receivers on T Higgins I watched a lot of him uh DK Metcalf even though I'm not close to his his weight range but um <laughs> kind of just just taking what they kind of use of of getting low and and playing off of smaller defenders and what they do against it um I sometimes watch um who else do I watch? I have, I have a little list that I kind of, I kind of pick some taller receivers out to kind of mm -hmm. um, model my game after uh, Calvin Johnson is one of them. Um, and just how they attack the ball and, and get open. So. Awesome. Uh, last set of questions. We call this kind of a rapid fire, the non-sports related questions. Uh, have Aztec Nation get, get to know some of your <laughs> likes. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite food? Ooh, um, I would say pasta. Good old pasta, spaghetti, pasta? And meat, sp spaghetti and meatballs, just original. All right. I don't know. I thought as a Texan, uh, it might have been some sort of barbecue, but yeah. Well, Sanfrini, it's Italian. I got that. <laughs> my mom, my mom's pasta. My mom's pasta. <laughs> good call. Good call. Mm -hmm. Um, favorite movie or TV show? Uh, I think I have two favorite movies. So I'd say one of them is Good Will Hunting. Great. And um, uh, a poet, a dead poet society is also really good. I like that one. Okay, right. I have to ask a question because you're young. Did you like those movies before they were everywhere on TikTok? I I actually don't have TikTok. No, but, good for uh, you. Good for my, you. My my dad. You don't know talk about the reels or whatever the things are. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm on Instagram reels. It's better okay. than TikTok, but I can't really get away with that one. But uh, my dad ended up showing me those two movies, and uh, I just I just really like those movies. I guess. Yeah, just being an old head, man, it cracks me up with like, how much these older movies that, like, were, I don't know, like, my older sister was like, you gotta watch, good. it's so deep, and all that, uh -huh. right? and, and so I did, we loved it, whatever, Dead Poet Society, and now they're on these little reels that everyone's like, yeah. you, know, you know, my captain, my captain, ah. like, like, yeah. and it's just, that's like, my favorite movie now. Oh, yeah. dude, it's phenomenal. You have TikTok, Paul? I'm sorry? You have to. I was, I was trying. I don't. I was trying to speak. Okay. The, the <laughs> listen, listen. Will and I are already becoming good friends. If I told them that I'm, on <laughs> it would like end it. It would like end it. I know better. I know better. <laughs> All right. Favorite musical artist or group? Ooh, uh, Zach Bryan. Okay. Nice. Um, 
favorite hobby when you're not playing basketball, football, working out? What do you like to do? Um, I would obviously put hang out with some friends, uh, but like self hobbies, uh, I play guitar um, and a little bit. I'm not the best. I'm not going to say like I'm, I'm the best at it uh, and just, yeah, just hang out with friends, I guess. Got to find, I'm going to try and learn how to surf soon. I've been talking to one of my buddies down here, so hopefully I can put that one in the hobby list. And and where, where, I'm sorry. Oh, and to... I'm, I'm going to put golf in there as well. Golf is oh, a big hobby. Go. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know why I didn't think of that, but that's that's a big one. No, and I, I was going to ask, and um, where have where did you become um, like a really seasoned vet in giving interviews? Because you've been awesome. Oh, <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I just, I mean, y'all are great guys. So it's kind of easy to talk to you. Um, <laughs> y'all, okay, yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all give me a, y'all give me a positive vibe. So I feel comfortable talking to y'all, I guess. Awesome, man. I was going to say one last, what are you thinking about as a major when you get to San Diego State? So, uh, I'm doing business and then I'm taking a class on sales as well. Um, kind of my dad kind of talked me uh, talk to me about it and I know how much he loves it and uh, I could definitely see myself doing that in the future so uh, uh, those are the two things right now yeah I'm ready to buy whatever you want to send to me <laughs> yes I'm, I'm already there. I'll, I'll, I'll work on my sales skills with you that's it bro that's it. Well, I, you've, I, got, you've got an uh, official visit this weekend with a couple guys you can put those sales skills <laughs> to use yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how many I can reel in there you go <laughs> Enjoy this weekend. Um, um, obviously, early signing day is coming up, too. Um, we appreciate you taking the time and uh, definitely look forward to seeing you out there uh, as an Aztec, you know, um, in practice field and then obviously in the games at Snapdragon next year. Yes, sir. Well, thank you all so much for having me. I'm, I love watching podcasts and listening to podcasts, so it's so cool to be on one. Um, I think y'all are, y'all are one of my first podcasts I'm on, so uh, it's a blessing. Thank you, guys. All Thank right. You. Have a good night. Paul, that was Will Cianfrini, uh, Carl's bad um, wide receiver. He's uh, obviously committed to San Diego State. He'll be on the official visit this weekend as well. Um, fun, energetic guy. It seemed like he had a smile on his face the, the entire time. Uh, it was cool talking to him. What did you make of our conversation with him? Uh I thought it was great. I mean, I, I am always uh, impressed um, when anybody who is that age decides to, you know, come with grown men and be interviewed and open themselves up and have to talk about things on the fly. And they're not, you know, we don't give them a list of questions ahead of time and all of those kinds of things. And so any young man who decides to do that, um, young lady who decides to do that, I mean, any, anyone, it's, I always find that really impressive. Um, because it's much easier just to be like, no, pass, I'll worry about that in a couple of years. Um, but then doubly when somebody comes on here and um, I mean, he looks like he could go and sit in a press conference at Snapdragon Stadium like today. I mean, he, he was he was yeah. very, very um, honest. He, uh, he he answered questions diplomatically when we asked about, you know, um, Danny O'Neill. He, he was just like a seasoned vet. I mean, I'm not really sure, um, you know, I mean, it's his, his, I don't know if it's the sales that his dad does and it kind of rubbed off on him and he was able to be able to handle it. But I thought he was just absolutely sensational. Um, it was really good that we were able to talk to him. Yeah, I, I he's a very intriguing prospect because he's very different than what San Diego State has had recently. Mm. Um, you can make the comparison to like Elijah Cody, Kobe okay. Smith, who are some of the more taller leaner receivers that they had um but he could he fitting into aztec fast um he may not have the straight line speed that fast does but just having that tall um lanky guy who can get up and, and go get passes he's got great hands he could be a red zone threat um all those things are going to help the offense be a lot more multi-dimensional versatile whatever you want to call it and I think he's going to fit in really well. He's obviously talking about improving his blocking uh, because that's going to be critical. Um, I'm I'm actually a little surprised that his recruitment didn't like intensify through the season. Um, and I think that's good for San Diego State, definitely. 
Uh, and I think uh, he seems very happy uh, staying in San Diego and, and going to San Diego State, which is which is great. But like I was a little surprised when I was looking at some of his recruitment that it didn't uh, pick up because he had a good season. He played with Julian Sane. So the, nat- the notoriety was there, right, for that team. Uh, but it's definitely, I think, a positive step for San Diego State to be able to keep him in San Diego and to be an Aztec for uh, hopefully four or five years. No, I think that's right. And I, I think um, I think that's really good. I, I, I agree with you. Um, and I think maybe the most intriguing part, maybe this answers some of the questions, is there is there is this idea that he's a little bit raw, that, you know, he is just starting to, to kind of figure out what it means to be a wide receiver. Um, yeah. I, and so I think maybe that's some of it. Um, but I mean, you know, there's been so many uh, news stories, obviously, because anything touching Colorado, it's like, you know, let's, you know, I think there's probably been more um, things about the weather in Boulder than, you know, <laughs> anybody, anything related touching Colorado. It's like, let's write about it. Let's talk about it. Um, and so obviously Danny O'Neill decommitting from Colorado because he was John Lewis's handpicked guy. Um, and he, so he fits in that whole marriage and the whole thing. And so now he's on his official visit, but I think people forget and people, you know, Danny O'Neill's a three-star recruit. He He's not a five-star guy, like some of the other players that they've landed and things like that, which, you know, it, it, it's not a knock on him. It's just, I think people, because of the publicity, they think he must be, in fact, somebody asked me about it today and they're like, oh man, do you think they're going to get that five-star recruit? And I was like, oh, he's not a five-star recruit, he's a three-star. But you would think that he was considering how much, right? But in terms of the rankings, whatever it is that you want to make them out to be out of a hundred, um, you know, like Julian saying, I think is a 98 um, and uh, Danny O'Neill is an 88, right? Um, so, you know, whatever those things mean and starters here and potential the NFL, they have all different meanings and stuff like that. But Will is also an 88. And and so just to think about like the, the, the level of recruit that at least 247 thinks that he is, um, I think it is there. And then I think it's exciting, again, as we just talked about, that he's still kind of new to the sport. Um, you know, that that a lot of times... I think especially in the world of um, the way that you prepare kids to go and get a college degree is that you you have them learn all of the passing skill techniques that make you look really good in shorts and get you notoriety, but you're not necessarily good at football. And um, I think this is the opposite of that. And so as his technique kind of catches up with clearly the physical gifts, I think San Diego State could have something pretty special. It is interesting that there's no wide receiver coach yet, and he wasn't aware of one. Uh, or maybe the, there there's some names that have been thrown out there or somebody, because he said he really hasn't had that much interaction with the coaches yet, but that's the plan this weekend. Um, but yeah, it's, gonna, it's I'm curious of who that wide receiver coach is going to be. And how that coach's philosophy and vision for what the wide receivers are going to do, how they're going to look physically, what they're going to excel at, what they're going to work on. Um, obviously, that doesn't change having the talented guys come in. Uh, the guys that are returning and the guys that are coming in. Uh, but I think that Will, that we always talk about, we can do to have a chance to play. I think Will has that chance. You're right. There is rawness there. But you know, for a wide receiver, you only really need a couple of plays, p- packages for a certain guy that has a certain skill to use. And as I mentioned, red zone target, you know, having a six four guy, you know, when you're at the 10 yard line trying to get uh, a pass into the end zone, you know, throwing a fade or throwing some sort of a back shoulder pass, something like that. I think he, that you could see a package for him as early as next year um, because that, they don't really have many tall guys on the roster as it is. And at the position, um, I like how some of the guys he emulates, he named, I mean, he said a Megatron, um, you know, one of the things we didn't ask him about it, but when I was recently researching him prior to this interview, we were seeing like some of the 24 seven, the rivals guy talk about how the quarterbacks at elite 11 wanted to talk about Will and wanted to talk about how he didn't drop a pass. Everything they threw, he caught. 
And I caught one comment, I think it was Adam Gorney, um, said um, a lot of those quarterbacks were going back to the schools that they had committed to and saying, hey, you got to go offer this guy because he's good. He may be under recruited, but he's good because I threw to him and he was catching everything. So um, that's the impact he made in that Elite 11. And, uh, you know, the, developing a rapport with Julian obviously helped during the season here. And hopefully he can develop a rapport with whoever ends up being, you know, the San Diego State quarterback over the next few years. No, I think it's it's really interesting um, that saying raw. I'm only saying raw because he said raw. Yeah. Um, in the article, you know, that that came out about the recruitment and the other uh, some of the other San Diego kids who are going to be there, um, you know, San Vini is the complete package as a wide receiver is is what we wrote. Our scout said, you know, um, that tall, polished player, um, you know, and then and then I thought it was interesting, too. He said, you know, very there's not a lot of blocking tape that you can pull up and see on him. But then he he volunteered that. And I, I think that that is a huge part of um, what he can bring to the Aztec Fast um, playbook because, you know, from my understanding of the offense and listening to some of the coaches in years past and different things like that, you know, and, and it wasn't, I mean, um, Coach Lewis also said at the press conference or, you know, back in the locker room, what they want to do is they want to stretch everybody horizontally and then once they've done that, then they want to confuse them with motion and then they want to start making them go vertically, right? Yeah. And so it's all of those components. Well, a 6'4", 180-pound, wiry, strong guy who gets into the weight room suddenly becomes a tight end on the field if he can block, right? I mean, um, you know, listed is the Colorado, where obviously Sean Lewis was just at, their tight end was 6'3", 215. Mm. I was like listed as that, right? I mean, you know, we see exactly what it is, but that's what he's listed at, which means that, you know, Stephen Freeney in a couple of years could be close to that size, especially, you know, who knows if he's even done growing. And so, like, what you could wind up doing if you can retain the speed, you can retain those things that, that you know, the really good receivers are able to do, um, your three wide receiver, one tight end, one running back kind of base formation suddenly becomes two tight ends because you can motion and play them both up close to the line. You, you know what I mean? You can, you can yeah. put, put an H back in the backfield and, and then motion C and Freeney in there. And, and now you have, a, you know, almost an I formation look. I mean, there's so many things you can do because he does have the size. And if he's, and if he has the skill and the willingness to be able to do that, it just allows that versatility just allows Sean Lewis to be able to be like, okay, this is, this is really good. Um, so I, I think that that's a pretty exciting thing that that was like what he wanted to talk about and then you know giving kind of a, a, a throwback to the old Aztecs you know Brett Swain he taught me we're, we're gonna we're gonna walk that's what we're gonna do because that's what wide receivers need to do and the reality of it is if he's able to help in that game first that will give him the snaps to be able to be on the field to be a receiver and um, because he does have uh, six four long arms um, and, you know, if he can prove to be adept at that, uh, that could be his niche to get on the field early is being able to provide a little bit of an extra, just effort, um, being able to actually stop a cornerback that's right up on you, you know, or, you know, crack down on a linebacker in a legal way, all of those kinds of things, um, that, that, that's going to be his key to the field. And it seems like he already knows that. Yeah, fun weekend coming up for San Diego State. Eight guys that we know of are coming in for official visits. Uh, that's the most I can think of, at least over the last four or five years, for one visit. But it makes sense because it's the new staff. They want to meet these guys. And obviously, with early signing day, just you know, two weeks away, um, they want to get these guys in. The, the eight is just what we know. That, right. There, there, there's, there's, you know, there's been thoughts that there's others. And so... I think it's a, it's a really exciting exciting weekend and um, you know uh, and I and it doesn't stop there right I mean Demarion White um, we spoke to him this week and uh, he's the defensive end from uh, Granite Hills um, who just you know for everybody listening I you know he's Andre but he he is uh, um, just an explosive defensive end prospect that like if he was if he had a little bit more weight to him 
um, would 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 be a national recruit. Um, but you know, San Diego State got back into his recruitment, but he's going to you know Fresno State, Arkansas State, and he's going to try to squeeze in. And he's an early enrollee. And if San Diego State, you know, Coach Boje is able to be able to make that relationship, um, you know, that's a that's a local guy who who, you know, who who said like, what better way I could play for the city, and the city is already familiar with me. Um, so there's there's a lot of potential there for San Diego State, and then I think it's I think it's a, a pretty uh, it, it's an understatement, especially with it's an understatement to say that this is a big weekend, but I think it's especially true given the fact that um, there's been a lot of young guys who have entered the transfer portal um, that, you know, they need to start bringing it back the other way, you know, and, and getting yeah. that momentum about the Sean Lewis fire and start turning that page to, to 2024. Absolutely. All right, guys, we appreciate you guys listening. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed our interviews with uh, Tate and Byer and Will C and Freeney. Uh, hope to see those guys out there playing at Snapdragon next year, obviously. Uh, we appreciate all of the likes, follows, shares, subscribes. Keep keep uh, you know sharing and and telling your friends about the podcast if you enjoy please, it. Please, and uh, we appreciate that for sure. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next time. Listening to the SDSU podcast presented by the East Village Times with your hosts Andre Hagverdian and Paul Garrison.